Genetic counselors in Boston are offering parents a controversial glimpse into the future of their baby's health. It's part of a landmark study that could lead to gene scans for all newborns. By law, every child in the U.S. gets a blood test for about 30 conditions, including cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia. The trial at Brigham and Women's Hospital uses genomic, genomic sequencing to screen for about 1,800 conditions, including some cancers. Tony DeCopel visited the researchers and joins us now. Tony, good morning. Good morning. By testing babies long before they show symptoms, doctors hope to start treatment early. That could save lives and prevent suffering, but it also raises questions of privacy and discrimination. And that's a major reason why most families are still saying no thanks. What is it? Is it a flower? The day after their daughter Cora was born. <gasps> is it oh. daddy? Good job! Yay. Lauren Stetson and her husband Kyle got an unexpected visit from a genetic counselor. I was in full recovery mode, as in I don't care about anything. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep our baby alive and recover myself. The visitor offered a free DNA scan for Cora a scan that the Stetsons learned could reveal disease-causing variations in their daughter's genetic code. I was just trying to make it through the day, so um, that was definitely something that was a little shocking. <gasps> What's this? Baby Cora is now one of the first healthy kids in America to have had her genome search for hidden problems. Doctors found a partial biotinides deficiency, something that Cora showed no outward signs of having. Had it not been detected, it could have caused a permanent drop in her IQ. It's a pretty insane thing to think about. <laughs> she would have still been considered normal. Nobody would have identified her as diseased. Dr. Robert Green is a medical geneticist at Harvard and co-director of the BabySeq Project, which enrolled Cora and is now recruiting hundreds of other families. So you could potentially save a child's life? Absolutely. But Dr. Green is also warning families about the risks, including breaches of privacy, and genetic discrimination. We can't predict what kind of discrimination is going to be occurring by the time your child grows up. We can't predict whether there's some sort of privacy breaches. and This information gets out and is used against your child in some sort of future scenario. And we, most importantly, we can't predict the information's accurate. Many genetic variations turn out to be harmless. And even if not, most of the conditions Dr. Green's team is looking for still have no cure. What makes you comfortable telling people about illnesses they can't treat? I would have to say I'm not 100% comfortable with it. What we're really trying to do in this study is ask the question, how beneficial or harmful is it to go down this road? Baby Cora is beating her condition thanks to a daily vitamin mixed into some yogurt. I feel like super mom. So you're talking extended family members? Yeah. Yeah. And yet, okay. about nine out of 10 families approached by Dr. Green and his team have declined the testing. People are distrustful of information gathering. They're, just, they're hearing about all these break-ins and hacks, and I'm afraid a lot of people are turning down the possibility of this information at this time because they, they just don't trust the future. Big steps. But Dr. Green believes the fear is temporary. And before long, most Americans will feel much like the Stetsons do already. I always think that more knowledge is power. And so anyone who's wavering, I think, even though the results may be scary, I think it's more scary to play the guessing game. And now you want to get your son tested as I well? I would love to do that. Uh, the Baby Seek program is part of a $25 million effort funded by the National Institute of Health. The genetic data collected will be housed in an academic molecular lab, and participants do consent to having it uploaded to a federal database for possible future research. The first results of this current study are expected in the next couple of years and will help doctors and lawmakers, importantly, decide how to use this technology responsibly. I think uh, this That's is clearly the, the future part. here. Yeah. Well, the dilemma, though, is still the breaches of privacy. and genetic discrimination. I think that that's what most people are concerned about. Also, free will. I don't want to be a lawyer, but my DNA sequence says I want to be. You know, it's right. sort of like, yeah. at what point do, do you begin to predict the future, and what point are you coaxing it into existence, almost? It's such a personal decision, too, for these families, but you're right. It is absolutely the future. I don't know how you close Pandora's box at this point. Well, this is it. This is yeah. coming. All right, Tony DeCopel, thank you very much, Tony. Thank you.